aging face that this world has forgotten. Ooh, what is up, you guys? And of course, welcome to another episode of Who Was Really Better? And on this episode, we were looking upon another very, very rare typing combination. These two are actually the only ones with the ground flying typing combination. Now, should we know that Glyngard, of course, less revolution of Gliscor, is the other one, which could be, of course, compared here, but quite honestly, I don't see the point. These are to be, of course, the ones that are the best in their area because they're so scarce. And the combination itself, we can, of course, add stated ground and flying are one of the best typing combination in the whole game. They resist a plethora of moves, have very few weaknesses, and these two stand real tall because they are part of the highest tiers, even till these days, actually. They haven't necessarily been matched up. They do different things, but they have a lot of things in common. But their stats kind of are a waiver factor here, and we're going to discuss, of course, who between these two actually are really better. So first and foremost, we're of course going to go over their stats. As you guys will see, they actually have a few things in common, but they peek at different things here. And Landers does have the more HP, being of course of 89, compared to of course Gliska's 75. And of course to attack that, here is where of course the Landers just crimes 145 compared to the 95. That's, that's a 40 leap. That's, that's disgusting. And now, of course, the second leap comes with Gliscor being clearly the more defensive one at 125 compared to, of course, Landers 90. And, of course, special attacks shouldn't necessarily matter all that much, but Landers does triumph over, of course, <laughs> the poor, poor, I should say, uh, Gliscor here. But Landers T is famous more for his offensive move pool and, of course, the viability. So, the special attack, not necessarily all that big, though it is a niche to it. And, of course, special defenses here with Landers triumph a little bit, but they do share that quite well. And of course, the speed here is where, of course, Gliscor is faster by four points, which might not sound like a lot, but there are a plethora of matchups here where Gliscor clearly is faster than Landorus. So one can clearly see that one is definitely more bulkier than the other, but also the other one is, of course, more um, clearly <laughs> offensively than the other. Lander just triumphs offensively, while Glygar do have a very pretty clear indication what it's able to do defensively. Though, if you look into, of course, their immunity and just the type of combination overall, what it does, it's very clear that it has two immunities, which is called Electric and Ground, and then resists our Bug, Fighting, and Poison. So, it has actually five typical resistances or typing it takes really well, while it is weak to, of course, Water and very weak to Ice. Which, you know, this type of combination really stands really tall, much like, of course, Electric and Flying. There are so many things getting solved by, of course, the Flying typing and the Ground typing really, really complicates or complements each other very 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 well is a reason this typing is so high up in the ladder when it comes to actually just the Pokemon meta overall. This type of combination has so many things going on and with of course this Pokemon's kind of niche move pool with both of them going on which are clearly clearly very very strong we're gonna talk about that very very soon. It's very clear that this type of combination is one of the strongest in the game and quite honestly I don't see many issues with it whatsoever. So with that said we're of course gonna go over their abilities we're gonna start off with of course Landers because well Landers only has one, and that is Intimidate, and that's actually quite a good ability and definitely for it, because it's definitely able to, due to of course not as effective defense as of course Gliscor has, it does have the chance to at least lower the opponent's attacks, which does make it actually able to of course shake a lot of things. Being able to actually be switching in against Bug, Finding and Poison Resist, and actually enforcing even further with of course um, Intimidation kind of makes Landers a bit more stamina wise and definitely longer its viability when it comes to taking hits. So it does that really well and of course with U-Turners active, Landers is very very helpful for that because it not only does it actually lower the attack, it actually takes the hits fairly well. Making of course the, the set that is of course with Rocky Helmet or Leftor is very very viable for it. So that's an awesome ability for Landers, sadly it only is one. But the one we're comparing to doesn't have much more viability of course its ability either. Because Gliscor has two abilities that are, well, not as relevant. We have, of course, Sand Villa, which are really, really tough to pull off, and there really are very few reasons of actually bringing that, since, of course, it's fairly bulky, doesn't necessarily need it. And, of course, we have Hyper Cutter, which is, of course, you get immunity to any kind of attack um, decrease on you. So it's a great immunity, but it still is kind of niche. It's not necessarily something you're looking forward to, and consider what Gliscor is used for often doesn't necessarily care for, of course, the attack drop that much. But then we have, of course, the Poison Heal, which is probably the stature of Gliscor, and the most thing people remember when seeing Gliscor is, of course, the substitute set with, of course, a Toxic Orb activated. 
The reason this set is so well and so awesome and so great overall is because Poison Hill recovered roughly 12.5% of your HP or 1.8 basically. And um, of course with that you're automatically getting a core status onto you which makes you immune to burn, sleep, stuff like that. And with the healing going on, Gliscor gets very very hard to KO and with this mixed defenses and pretty okay average HP. It can be very very hard to KO, but it doesn't help of course as stated previously, it has very very few weaknesses we can knock it out, out of it. And even if they can do it, usually this comes with a substitute and stall set which are tremendously insane and awful to be dealing with. I love this set though, I should say that, but I definitely hate facing it. It's a very very effective set. But yeah, it would be like a fair comparison if we didn't talk about actually what they do share, because they actually do share Typically, the own kind of defensive set going on. They usually are somewhat offensive in Bond, but definitely are usually used as offensive responses to offensive active Pokemon. Uh, one of the most common traits here is, of course, the Botic access to the likes of Stealth Rocks, which is a great trait for any ground type. And being able to, of course, be in flying too, yeah, nice. And then, of course, get Earthquake, clearly, and um, also get U turn on both of these, which is awesome. I mean, these are some of the more creative moves that they both can get out of a rather tough situation. So they both have access to that, yeah, that's pretty darn cool. And then of course we got and yeah, the Swordstones, which is also one of those really, really good things. Swordstones definitely makes these Pokemon very, very, very viable and actually helping them to hit even harder. But there is pretty much where it all ends. They do have a few niches going on in a shared move pool, but they aren't necessarily that important to it. For example, while of course Landers gets superpower, uh, Gliscor gets the guy up a cat. Clearly, it's the weaker move between the two, but at least it gets it. But a few actually strengths that Gliscor has is, of course, that it gets acrobatics. Uh, the reason that is such a good move for it is because it actually is a proper flying stab, which is actually something Landers does lack. It does get extra ability to fly, and with C moves now active, yeah, that's pretty darn cool. But at least you know it. There are very, very clear indication which one can do it more than often or not. And of course, Gliscor has likes of Quick Attack, and if we go over just a rough down between his move pool, it does actually get Steel Wing also, which is a very, very good filler move overall. And then you of course, Stone Edge, which they both get, and Poison Jab. And outside of that, it does have a few niches move with a cost comes with the previous generations going on, such as, of course, Aqua Tail, Defog, which is one thing that definitely Landers does lack, and of course, Tailwind. It has also Sky Attack, if you want to utilize that. And of course, one of those really, really niche things is that Gliscor does get accessibility to, the, of course, Elemental Fangs, being of course Ice Fang, Fire Fang, and of course Thunder Fang. While clearly weak moves, there are still some variety that Landers does definitely lack, and definitely enforces that maybe Gliscor has what it takes to be compared, of course, against Landers. Now, with that said, we have to go over, of course, Landers' edges, but it's very clear that Gliscor definitely can hold its own much much more than the defensive set really has been problem with. Now Landers is necessarily not offensively as impressive as Gliscor outside of its stats alone and uh, it's very very clear that it actually enforces this really. Uh, it does get Iron Tail which is one of those really really good moves and um, we also have Stone Edge which I clearly said, said since before and of course Explosion which is new for it so it does have a few things going on and of course it gets access to the likes of Outrage, which is not necessarily all that bad actually. It's definitely one of those really weird moves, but it still can use it really well. And of course it gets Hammer out when you use a more uh, unspeedy version, I guess you say, of Landers. But outside of that, Landers has a big edge and that is his special move pool. While it's, not, it's a very, very rare case to see, it still has a really extreme one at that. It gets the likes of Extra Sensory, Psychic, Sludge Bomb and Sludge Wave, Focus Blast. And of course, Earth Power stands out here and Grass Knots. There are a few moves here which definitely enforces it to be a bit niche actually, and actually quite prominent, very, very dangerous at that. But there's pretty much where it all ends for Landris. Now, I should say this the offensive set between these two is very clear that Landris does better. While Gliscor does have a better overarching move pool, Landris still hurts a lot more. It's basically 40% more damage than what Gliscor can output naturally. And the thing is here, when Gliscor, of course, goes for a sword stance to come for the offensive move pool, it does hurt the opponent, but it's very likely when Landers goes for a sword stance that something dies. It's it's definitely up there. It's so much stronger than Gliscor. But when it comes to defensive sets, yes, Gligar is triumphing over, of course, Landers. Well, I could say a Landers, due to Intimidate, is as effective to, of course, take on physical hits. 
I really have to say that Gliskor does it naturally, doesn't need a switching to pull that off, while ladders it very very easily is forces actually being forced out. Now because of special defensive bulk, it's they're so close when it comes to what they're able to do. Ladders clearly is the better between taking special defensive hits or special attacks and overall, but it's such a small niche between them that I don't see it worth comparing more than say on ladders, due to of course his extra HP is able to take that on better. But Gliscor has a very darn good edge here, and that is actually Roost. It's actually able to recover, which is something that Landris isn't able to do. And that is a very, very big perk, and something I didn't know that on before. Gliscor is actually able to recover. The defensive set is able to stay on and stay on and stay on. And while they both are able to kind of recover in some fashion, Gliscor is the one that definitely are able to do it, and actually speed enough to pull that off. So really with all this said, while Landers is offensively superb to Gliscor, there are a variety here that is definitely making Gliscor quite excelled in a lot of other things. And in the end of the day, I really have to give the edge to the one that's able to do the most things. And that is Gliscor. And I really, really believe Gliscor is a super, super underrated Pokemon overall. Now I know, and I really have to say this really, really clear, Landers offensively triumphs over Gliscor any day of the week and that's not gonna go away. I even understand why Landers is the most preferred Pokemon here. It's clearly because of its um, offensive prevalence, 145 base attack is super super scary and together with of course Light of Scarf, Landers is a very very hard Pokemon to switch into so I can definitely see its strengths overall. I love Landers myself and it's definitely a super super viable Pokemon but if I have to go more into detail if you know what it's more able to do then Gliscor kind of out of nowhere really shines through mainly because it has a lot of other things going on that Landers cannot do. While of course Landers has a special move pool which are super viable for it, it's not necessarily what it's used for. I can definitely see in a league format that Landers is better mainly because of that niche special move pool. But if I have to look over of course what his Pokemon is able to do, Gliscor has so many other things going on. It has so many more things it's actually able to do that I actually feel a bit... A bit disgusted actually that the most thing is famous for is the Toxic Stall set. Because it's able to do so much more, but with that set, it can actually even do more things. One of those really stands out is the has immunity due to of course its toxic stall and the poison heal overall, which makes this Pokemon super scary to deal with. And with Roost, with Defa, with Sword Stance, you know, the sky is the limit in this kind of situation. Because Gliscor has so many other moves it can do and actually match up much, much better than Landers can do. While Landers' combination of, of course, Edgequake does work to its actually power here and definitely are a very, very viable kind of set of moves, Gliscor can do much, much more than that. It's not forced to be locked to, of course, the Edgequake. It can do so many other things. And since the book can U turn and actually Gliscor is slightly faster. I will say that, you know, the niches in its speed definitely helps it out quite a lot here, and it's very easy for me to say that Gliscor is the better between these two. Now, of course, with that said, what do you guys think? Which one do you guys think is the better one? As stated here, I do understand both sides of the argument. I even understand why Landers, in so many regards, are better than Gliscor, and that's not gonna go away, but definitely make your case here. And of course, with that said, guys, thank you for as always so much for watching. What matchup do you wanna see next? And don't forget to tune in, of course, on next episode, where we will look upon two of the strongest ghost types, in my opinion, of course. So until then, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next week. Till then, take care.